time to sit down. Yep. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm here with my brother, Rabbi Scott, for our weekly conversation. Um, uh, for those of you who will watch or are watching, please hit the share button so this way this message can get out to everybody. Um, real quick, we're going to go ahead and start off with uh, some announcements. Thursday classes are back in full uh, effect, if you will, um, 1418 Woodlawn Avenue. It's important uh, that you put the avenue because if not, you'll end up somewhere else. Yes, definitely. Um, we are at a new facility, well, new to us yep. facility, um, with a bunch of uh, great people there as well. Um, if you're seeing this and you get the times and dates down, then you are invited to come out and join us for service, for class, for any of the uh, Holy Day specials that we uh, host. So. 1418 Woodlawn Avenue, just outside of downtown. Um, Thursday classes, 7 p.m., 1418 Woodlawn Avenue. Saturday morning, 10.30 a.m., for the Boker Shabbat service. Hey, sister, how you doing? Um, yep. Come, come on out and join us. And we will be preparing here within the next few weeks to do start the turkey drive yet again to help provide families and people of San Antonio and the surrounding areas with a turkey for their uh, home, for their family, uh, for their holidays. For the Thanksgiving season. Yep. Um, and so... We, we will be doing that and doing that fully. Also, one of the things that was mentioned earlier is getting the, the men riled up together to go out and gather again. We will be doing that, as well as the sisters. I believe uh, there are two sisters in mind. I won't mention them. Uh, they, they are going to be starting up the Sisters Fellowship. Um, so if you're, you know, if that way you can seek out uh, advice, uh, understanding, and even give advice and, and just be there for your sisters of faith. That, that is going to be a beautiful thing. Um, it, it's, it's a good opportunity to hang out outside of the church or the synagogue to build uh, each other up and grow with one another. Yeah, you know, some of my best memories with the brothers of faith is... Uh, where there are some good memories inside shul, inside the synagogue, some of the better memories are outside of the synagogue. Uh, you know, just being brothers, hanging out, and that, that's helped to develop our relationship over the years. Uh, and it sustained us as brothers over the years. So, you know, I know some of you may say, well, I'm an introvert. I don't, it's okay. Just go hang out, you know watch as things go on and then slowly uh, take those steps of faith to get to know your your family that God's brought you brought into your life alrighty that kind of segues into the next uh, portion the, the 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 conversation if you will yeah um, there was a question from a brother um, if you were approached by an atheist or there's an atheist around you and they're uh, pretty high up on the well I don't believe in God I don't believe in Jesus I don't believe in Yeshua I don't believe in any of the other uh, deities that may be out there what's the best way to one either approach them or two kind of uh, deal with them if you will okay there's there's generally uh, two popular approaches uh, one is, you know, you right away go back and forth with them, right? Uh, it's kind of like saying, I remember I heard a rabbi say this, um, the bear in the woods doesn't need for you to believe if he's there or not. Um, you know, he's there. Uh, <laughs> whether you believe it or not, it doesn't matter. Um, so, I mean, there's that. Um, God ultimately, he's there. Uh, whether we believe in him or not, 
uh, really, you know, he, he wants us to have that relationship with us. And this is something that's universal from Christianity to Judaism. Um, when you get into some of the other faiths, it gets off into your subjugation more than your relationship with God. Um, but within the Judaic faith, within the Christian faith, it is about having a relationship with your Creator. Uh, uh, within some of the other ones, it's about you subjecting yourself to the Creator. Um, and so these, these are pinnacle differences. Uh, as far as dealing with somebody who doesn't believe, <clears throat> You know, Messiah dealt with that several times within the, the within the Besora, the Good News, and his dealing with it was often to simply express the love of God uh, and not delve off into some of the potentially hazardous debates that you can have. Um, and so he would continuously express the love of God to them and continually uh, be that living example that he was of. Uh, of God's love and so it falls to you and I to follow that example to be the living embodiment of, of God's love of God's mercy and when they don't understand it they'll obviously ask why and then that's your segue to say well because I have a relationship with God and you can also um, it's not easy but he always is there he always is 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 quick to answer and quick to hear um, and he is faithful and his word never comes back void so these are things that that we can absolutely say with with a hundred percent certainty um, the sages give us very good advice on this they say don't debate unless it's for the sake of salvation or the kingdom itself don't debate like I said, the bear doesn't need you to prove that he's there. He is there. Uh, we know the evidence by us just simply waking up every morning that God is there. And there are other evidences throughout our day. We don't have to prove that. Um, if other people choose to turn a blind eye to it, that's simply different. Um, most often, I believe um, Shapiro did the, the, the numbers on it. But there, there's a great number of people who claim to be atheists who are simply hurt by what they believed were, was God, right? Why'd God allow this? Why'd God allow that? And these sort of things, and therefore they divorce themselves with, from the whole notion of God. Uh, but uh, as one popular Christian scientist put it, um, you know, our God does not exist within a box. Um, you know, He doesn't w exist within our, our scope of, of reality, if you will. He, he exists in it, but also beyond it, because He's God. And so, uh, he, He's, well, there's three things that they say uh, consist in creation, space, time, and matter. Uh, and he exists in all of those and yet beyond all of those because he is God um, and none of those three which is the scientist belief the atheist hinge point none of those three can exist without each other they are all vital to each other um, but yet God exists in them and beyond them and that is the beauty of it, because even in science, they show his fingerprint all throughout creation. The, if you want to take that a little bit further, you can look at the, I believe it's the, the Higgs boson, um, the, the God particle. They took that from part of the, the Aleph bed. Hmm. There you go. Or basically, that's kind of, they got their formula from that, uh, from the from the Aleph bed, from one uh symbol or character in the the olive bit a little bit further um okay for the the second one i've kind of noticed uh a trend a little bit of a trend on uh facebook 
uh, these last couple of weeks where uh, brothers and sisters alike seem to be uh, going through different different things, different forms of uh, adversity, whether it's that, that liar whispering in their ear and they're kind of holding on to it or believing it or uh, falling victim to it. Um, you're, and with, with the, the uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas, for those who, who celebrate Christmas, those are some other some of us celebrate Hanukkah. Some people celebrate celebrate whatever you want to celebrate in, in that regard. But with with this time of year coming up upon us very very quickly, it, it has increased the the number of suicides. So uh, one, your life matters. Doesn't matter if you're associated with a group. Whatever life matters uh, group. Uh, if, if you're alive, if you're this side of six feet then your life does matter to myself, my brother, uh, our synagogue, and, and a multitude of synagogues and churches uh, in and around the San Antonio area, whether you live here in town, out of town, out of state. In Pearsall. Really. Yep. Um, you know, yeah, your life does absolutely matter. Um, you know, a lot of times, you know, having, and even having a, a marital relationship, is is work uh, having a girlfriend having a boyfriend it is is uh, a thing of that that you have to invest in you have to put some of yourself in and sometimes you know you're like well what's the point I'm not seeing too many results again life is not based on the McDonald's time frame you're not here to get a meal in five minutes um, you know, you're here to grow, to mature, to make progress. Uh, if I if I just use my life as an example, and not my whole life, most certainly, but just my time in ministry, uh, it has steadily progressed. Um, there really have it's it's only progressed actually. Um, whereas there might not be any leaps and bounds. That's okay. As long as it's progress, because I know with progress, that means harvest is still coming. That means uh, new horizons are still on their way. And, and as we venture forward and continue, I know that only progress will happen. I know that some people may, you know, the, the work, the weight may be a little bit heavy for them. But this is where we encourage each other to keep moving forward keep uh, pressing on and that we help bear each other's burdens. This is where we, you know, uh, the brothers and sisters go out, go hang out in fellowship or go hang out outside of the churches, the synagogues to lean on one and one another and, and help build each other up. Yeah. I mean, one guy, he had, he had this person, he had posted uh, his, a couple of pictures, you know, uh, one of a church, one of a, one of a mosque. And he says, uh, you know, this isn't, this isn't, but then he shows a picture of a person, he says this. And in this, it's the, the true aspect of it is this is where your relationship with God has to start. Um, and as he's called from Genesis to Revelation for us to gather together that he may dwell among us, um, then this is what we do. Right, and it's true you can worship God anywhere at any point, but gathering together enables us to bear one another's burdens, and it enables us to learn from each other's experiences, enables us to lift each other up, not press down upon anyone, um, because in truth we all need help getting up, uh, getting to the next uh, phase of things. So. You know, take that as encouragement, and look, if you are a part of an assembly, a part of, of some group of faith, oh, Brother Alim, blessings to you. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday once again. <laughs> <laughs> um, and if you are a part of some assembly somewhere, listen, be the person that reflects Elohim, that, that lifts people up and encourages them. Um, and if you're in town and you get a chance, stop by Gino's Deli 
uh, order a Rabbi Scott. They are delicious. That's what's up. Uh, and if your name is Roy Orozco, hey, bro, still waiting. Uh, all, all that aside, um, thank you to Capital Tax, Gino's Deli, uh, C'est La Fit, and the rest of the uh, corporate sponsors of Baruch El Ajenu. We love you guys. Um, and we most certainly couldn't do this without you or without the co-laborers that are there in the field with us. We love you guys. Um, Once again, share this uh, live stream. If you do not have access to Facebook and want to look us up, um, www.bekmc.com or Baruch Eluhenu SA and you can find us on YouTube there and all of the, the events and stuff we host we upload to YouTube as well yes um, so here within a couple weeks we're going to be announcing some awesome things that you can get to be a part of get your seats get your reservations early so that way we get everything under wraps uh, before the season's even upon us. And help take part. Look, if you belong to a synagogue or church or, or even some other assembly of God, get involved there. If you don't belong to any place, please come visit us. Uh, come experience what a family of God feels like. Um, and watch as your life is blessed is increased and yes there may be uh, a couple of growing pains but nevertheless your life will be continually progressed increased and uh, you will see the love and experience the goodness of God some of the biggest blessings come when you're on the other side of the storm or on the other side of that test or the trial or tribulation that you're, you're going through whatever hardship that is your, your, your bigger blessing is just on the other side of that so yeah. uh, keep fighting the good fight don't give up don't give in keep pressing forward uh, don't let anything anyone get in the way of your faith or your relationship with God so yeah you know um, yeah just just continue to be uh, to make progress yeah they um, It, there, there was a question asked years and years and years ago to a rabbi. It says, and the rabbi asked his, his uh, students this. And he says, who is, who is more blessed? The person receiving the charity or the person giving the charity? Um, and the truth about that statement is, is it's the person who gives the charity. So it's the person who gives the love, gives the respect gives the honor who is greater blessed than the, the one who simply receives uh, because this person is growing is making progress and this person then begins to see those same things that he gave uh, come back to his life in his time in their season um, that being said this uh, Thursday tomorrow 7 p.m. 1418 Woodlawn Avenue um, Saturday morning, 10.30 a.m., 14.18 Woodlawn Avenue. Come on out and join us. Be a part of our family. Um, doesn't matter if you're Catholic, Baptist, whatever. You're, you're invited. This is your um, this invitation. This is your, come on in. This is your invitation to come on out and join us. God bless. Hope to see each and every one of you who will watch this video and who will share this video to come on out and join us. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys. God bless. Blessings. Blessings.